Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. And these are 15 Japanese films from the 2010s that you should watch. Let's do it. Confessions, 2010. This is a drama with a little bit of horror in it. This compelling film takes place subsequent to a murder perpetuated by middle school students and focuses on the emotional and psychological effects on the students and parents in conjunction with the complex act of vengeance that follows the incident. The camera work, visuals, and lighting are gorgeous, creating a soft but ominous mood. Acting, direction, and editing are also top-notch, and there are some great surprises and intriguing plot lines to enjoy. The script writing, in particular, is outstanding, and how it develops and explores the various characters, one of whom is basically a sociopath. Viewer note that this is a pretty dark film with some disturbing content. I don't use the word masterpiece often. The term gets thrown around way too much in, in uh, cinema circles, but this film by uh, director Tetsuya Nakashima comes pretty darn close. Miss Zombie, 2013, a horror film. This film takes place in a reality where zombie infections have many different stages and full-blown zombie transformations take years to complete. Zombies with a low virus count are used as household servants, since they are relatively harmless if fed properly. One such zombie woman is the focus of this story. Spectacularly shot in black and white, this is an arthouse film that plays with genre expectations. The zombie is used as a protagonist that quickly earns the viewer's sympathy through a referenced backstory, as well as the fact that she is consistently harassed by humans. There's also an interesting family dynamic involving the little boy. The lead actress, Ayaka Komatsu, gives a great silent performance. Pacing is glacial, and there is some repetition in her, her uh, daily routine, but there is a lot of character development along the way. It's also disturbing on a psychological level. Impressive stuff by director Sabu. Shoplifters, 2018, a drama. A family of small-time shoplifters take in a child they find outside in the cold. This is essentially a character-driven film, not really a story-driven one, and in that sense, it wholeheartedly succeeds. Both the individual characters and their family dynamic are very compelling. There's also a strong undercurrent of anxiety that the viewer will feel while watching this. Sakura Ando is utterly phenomenal and gives one of the best performances in recent years. This is a very impressive film by Hirokazu Kureda. Hanagatami, 2017, a drama romance. In the spring of 1941, 16-year-old Toshihiko moves to a seaside town and befriends other adolescents as they all contend with the war's inescapable gravitational pull. This film by Nobuhiko Obayashi is very colorful and beautiful to watch, even though the colors are artificially applied. Mugi Karawaki has a significant supporting role, and it's always nice to see her in a movie. The script focuses on the main characters a lot, and gives, uh, gives it some emotional resonance. This is very Japanese in its style and cultural aspects, and it's also similar in style to this director's prior works. Nicely paced, despite its lengthy runtime of almost three hours. Rage, also known as Ikari, 2016, a dramatic thriller. A man brutally murders a married couple and leaves behind the words Ikari written with their blood. The killer then undergoes plastic surgery and flees. We are then introduced to three different stories involving different characters at different locations in Japan. Each of these stories involves a male stranger who is new in town. One of these men is the killer, but who is it? Yes, the premise of this movie is fantastic, and the cast is star-studded. Satoshi Sumabuki, Aoi Miyazaki, Suzu Hirose, Ken Watanabe, Kenichi Matsuyama, Go Ayano, etc. There's a lot of suspense in this one, and that suspense is earned and generated from feeling worried for the safety of all of the characters, because you're not sure which one of these outsiders is the killer. Even more interestingly, there's a flip side to that coin, because you begin to care for the three male suspects. There's a lot of multidimensionality to the characters, and there's also some hard-hitting social commentary. Uh, not a particularly violent film, but there are a few scenes that are quite disturbing in this film by Sang Il Lee. Why Don't You Play in Hell, 2013, a comedy drama action flick. 
a renegade film crew becomes embroiled with a Yakuza clan feud in this energetic film by Shion Sono. The story has a variety of colorful characters, including the daughter of one of the mob bosses, played enthusiastically by both Fumi Nikaido as a young adult and Nanoko Hara as a child. And rough, right from the start, this film is pretty madcap, but after the viewer acclimates to its pace, it does prove to be highly infectious and entertaining. One interesting aspect is that the Yakuza are just as obsessed with filmmaking as the film crew, which makes this movie revolve almost entirely around the theme of cinema. Uh, and this adds some character and thematic depth to it. Viewer beware of quite a bit of bloody violence, <laughs> and a vibe that's similar to 70s Yakuza flicks, but it's mostly played for laughs during the insanely long and crazy gang battle. This is good stuff. One Cut of the Dead, 2017, a comedy horror drama film. Things go badly for a hack director and film crew shooting a low-budget zombie movie in an abandoned World War II Japanese facility when they are attacked by real zombies. It's difficult to discuss the plot without spoiling it. This is basically a genre bender that infuses family drama in the theme of the love of filmmaking. It's a lot better than I had expected going into it, and the main reason for that is the script writing, which is incredibly detailed and very well written. The finale is lengthy and a lot of fun. It reminded me of a certain Japanese comedy film from the mid-1990s. This highly acclaimed movie from Shinichiro Ueda is one of the most popular Japanese films from recent years, and is therefore essential viewing. Rebirth, 2011, a drama. A mistress kidnaps her married lover's newborn baby and raises her for four years as her own child. After she is apprehended, the young child returns home, but the family dynamics are, are permanently weakened. This is a very female-centric film with a significant psychological undertone. The characters uh, that are given the most development are the kidnapper, unexpectedly viewed as a protagonist of sorts, and the girl, after she has become a young adult. The story shifts between different time periods, but it's pretty easy to follow. This is a very good film from director Izuru Narushima, with multidimensional characters, a fairly unusual topic, and great performances by both Hiromi Nagazaku and Mao Inoue. 37 Seconds, 2019, a drama. A 23-year-old girl with cerebral palsy feels stifled by her controlling mother and shady manga partner. There are a few unusually sensual moments early on, but this is a surprisingly delicate and endearing coming-of-age story. It's also rather intimate, and shows that the physically handicapped can feel smothered by not being allowed to do things independently. Really good stuff from director Hikari, that's in the same tradition as Korean films like Oasis, If You Were Me, and Elbow Room, in the sense that it does a fantastic job of taking down biases and preconceptions regarding people with physical handicaps. The Long Excuse, 2016, a drama. This movie is about a gloomy novelist who cheats on his wife and makes life difficult for everyone around him. But after his wife dies in a bus accident, this man is faced with the task of finding closure and moving on with his life. Now one of the most interesting things about this movie is that the protagonist is the epitome of multidimensionality. I mean, this guy cheats on his wife and has an attitude problem to boot, so you immediately dislike him. But then, he shows a softer side when he volunteers to help care for two little kids, whose father is also a widower from the same bus accident. There's a lot of complexity to his character, which really drives the film. The script writing is also impressive in how it explores so many different angles of one scenario so exquisitely. Masahiro Motoki gives a fantastic performance, and this was directed by Miwa Nishikawa. Wood Job, 2014, a comedy. After failing his college entrance test, a slacker decides to take up forestry in the hopes of meeting the cute girl on the promotional poster. Director Shinobu Yaguchi has an outstanding feel for comedy, and this is one of his best films. This is hilarious and charming with a very laid-back style of humor. Shota Somatani, Hideaki Ito, and Masami Nagasawa are a great trio of leads who play off each other very nicely. The script also provides an interesting look at forestry, and there is some cultural content as well. One of the most appealing and purely entertaining comedies in existence. Wet Woman in the Wind, 
2016 uh, sultry romantic comedy when a successful but tired Tokyo-based playwright who has sworn off easy women in casual encounters takes refuge in the countryside. His plans are disrupted by a uh, rather, uh, I guess you could call her, horny woman who pedals fast into his life and is unrelenting. There are some very lengthy and uh, rather graphic sex scenes in this film, but the blend of sex and humor is risque enough to be offensive to some viewers, but ridiculous enough to be amusing for others. So it all depends on where you, where you lie here. This film by Akihiko Shiota is far more interesting and fun than I had expected. And the reason for this is the nuanced interaction between the lead characters outside of the bedroom. This girl plays psychological games with people, which leads to some uh, crazy dialogue at times. Some of the conversations are shot without edits, but the fluid camera work keeps it visually interesting. While not quite as stifling in its sexual tension as this director's earlier film, Moonlight Whispers, it does have some similarities and is a nice surprise with a number of hilarious moments. This is probably the best film in the recent Nikatsu Roman Porno Reboot Project. The Cowards Who Look to the Sky, 2012, A Drama Romance. This film by Yuki Tanada is an impressive exploration of relationships, sexuality, and coming of age. The focus is mostly on a wife who has an affair with a high school boy. Some interesting relationship dynamics and dilemmas here, including the problems of infertility and pressures for a wife to have children. There are also a few surprises to be had, and a study of some other related characters, including a high schooler who has trepidations regarding his future. Performances are great, and this film bleeds quality from start to finish. Viewer note that there are a few sex scenes during the opening half, but uh, this is good stuff. Birds Without Names, 2017, a drama thriller romance. Tawako looks for love in all the wrong places, engaging in relationships with men who treat her badly and use her for sex. She shacks up with a male friend, but certain events lead her to investigate the disappearance of a former lover. Yu Aoi is fantastic in the lead role. She gives a gloomy and intense performance. This is definitely one of the darker films of her career. Nicely directed as well, with a naturally evolving storyline that is legitimately interesting. One possible flaw is the ending, which I thought was a bit melodramatic and uh, uh, drawn out, I guess you would say, but this film by Kazuya Shiraishi is certainly worth checking out. River, 2011, a drama. Three years after losing her boyfriend in a random killing, a woman returns to the shopping district where the murders occurred and interacts with a variety of strangers in her attempt to move on. This impressive film opens with a 14-minute unedited introductory shot of the protagonist walking through Akihabara and interacting with a photographer. In addition to good character development, this is also a very interesting look at Japanese culture. I really like the camera work and how the shots were framed because they captured urban Japan very well. Some lengthy images of the tsunami-devastated towns are pretty insane as well. Performances are solid in this film by Ryuichi Hiroki. So there you have it. 15 more, or I guess I should say, 15 Japanese films from the 2010s that you should watch. Now the titles for these films in this video are listed in the description box below. I'm not providing availability information in this playlist because most of these films I saw a while back. Availability has changed over time. Usual method for checking availability is Google, so be sure to check out any films that seem interesting to you. And I have reviewed some of these films on my channel in separate uh, videos, and I know I give availability information in those videos if you're interested. Tons of good stuff on this list. And as usual, I'm going to provide a part two to this video and give you 15 more Japanese film recommendations from the 2010. So look out for that list in the near future. And uh, check out some of the prior videos in this playlist. I went through each decade going back to the 1920s. So the next video will be the last video in this uh, particular kind of mini playlist. So you'll have 200 Japanese film recommendations from the last 100 years to check out. Maybe I'll do a, a summary video at the end and we'll just talk about it in general. And as always, we'll see you next time.